what were they able to do to take control of this game so early? Um, their shot making. Uh, Embiid's uh, ability to make plays uh, makes the game easy for a lot of their players. They obviously got a good team, good players. I can't imagine anybody playing better than him. Um, he's playing. That was MVP level tonight. Um, we tried different things on him, but good player. I mean, it, it's he's uh, he's definitely a handful. And and what was uh, a common theme on the, the three point line for them? Nine threes in the, in the first half. I think they made seventeen in the game. Yeah, well, um, they were hot. Danny Green. You want him to not take one shot without a dribble. I don't know if he took any shots without a dribble. Uh, made his threes. A uh, handful of them were mistakes. Um, but with that being said, they put you in some tough positions. Uh, with Embiid and, and Simmons, they can pass over double teams. They can pass over the defense. Like I said, they, they got a lot of good players. And, Har and Harris is, he's, I don't know if there's a, a, a better third um, that does what he does. He defends, can play multiple positions, scores all over the floor. But his defense, his ability to to rebound out of his position is another is another problem. Ava, Scott, you obviously switched up your defense on Embiid and went in more single covered for a good chunk of it. Just what was the what did you see on tape that made you want to give it a try? Obviously, the double was working for you in game two. Well, I mean, just just we have to keep mixing it up on him. Uh, we were we were playing him square it up until he put the ball on the floor and try to double team from the top. Uh, but he's able to he's able to make plays uh, for his teammates and and the way they shot tonight it was. Um, it was one of those games where no matter what you did, they were going to get some decent shots, even late contest shots they were making. Like I said, there we, did, we didn't play as well as we would love to play, obviously, but they had a lot to do with it. This is a very talented, experienced team. Um, they're championship ready right now. Um, I wouldn't think they would surprise anybody if they, they – um, they just, we got one more crack at it. That's why I told the guys we got we, we want to play better. We want to give ourselves one more one more chance to play better. Um, but yeah, they they got a lot of they got a lot of talented players that that really know how to play and they're a great experience. And obviously, that said, after what you just said about Joel, but what can you tell um, Daniel about defense moving forward and just tweaks that you saw today? Well, I think. He just has to keep locked in, and and the way we play, the pace. You know, sometimes he gets tired. I can probably take him out after six or seven minutes, and then put him back in. But he's gaining great experience playing against the MVP or one of the top two probably in the league this year. Um, and anytime you can play against these the best players, you learn something from them, and you learn something about yourself. And um. Yeah, but I, I thought Gaff is going to play hard, and, and, and that's what I love about his potential is he's going to play hard and he's going to continue to get better. Fred. Hey, Scott, uh, you mentioned the, the three-point deep or the three-point performance from them in general. What did you think of your guys' team defense in regards to just giving up those shots and your rotations on the perimeter? Well, there were some mistakes. There's no question, but a lot of some of it also was they put you in a tough position. You got to make, you know, if when you do when MB catches it so deep and it's hard to keep him out from catching it deep, and he's so skilled with the with the dribble. So when you do come double, your your rotations have to be on point, and even if they're on point, they had some good shooters taking them. So we we'll love to play better um, defense from the three. We also would love to make some threes ourselves, but they have a very, very good team. Like, I, I, I mean, it's not not something that you guys don't know, but we have to – we do definitely have to play a little bit better on our rotations. Um, 
And what do you make of Rui's performance over these first three games in tonight? It's another guy who's gaining experience. Uh, gaining experience, guarding some really talented players. Some players that can be put all over the floor. Um, they're not one-dimensional players. They're not just one spot on the on the floor. They they got a lot. They they're very skilled, and and very athletic and long and and they're experienced. But he's gaining it. You know, he's just what just crossed the hundred game mark in his career. So these are all good experiences for him. Um, none of us. I mean, our we all would have loved to play better. Not just Rui, not just uh, Gaff, but we all we all could have played better, and we got one more opportunity to to send this back to to Philadelphia. Yeah, Scott, uh, you know you're in the middle of the game, but did you did you sense uh, fans tonight having a, a good crowd here for the first time this year? And for in almost more in more than a year. Yeah, I mean it's it's just great having our, our crowd here. Um, too bad we couldn't have played better, uh, but it's just it's great to see it because you, you, by seeing it, um, you know the world is getting to a, a, a normal place or back to normal. Uh, so that that's that's actually good. Like I said, I wish we would have played better. I know our players um, feel the same way, but our fans, you know, I, I love the fact they just, they cheered on, cheered for our guys. They know what, what it took for us to get here. And, and they know this is um, a tough matchup, but they cheered and they, they came out, you know, 10,000 people. That was just good to see. Like I said, we got one more opportunity. It's, it's a, you gotta win. You gotta win four games. Um, it's obviously a, a, a very, difficult challenge ahead but we're not we don't need to win four we just need to win one and and monday night is uh, gives us another opportunity to do that matt paris hey scott obviously you guys don't want to find yourself in a position like this but what can you guys learn from being a three or hole like you guys are you got to keep fighting you can't uh, you can't let go of the of the of the of the rope you got to keep pulling the rope together and and it's it's no different than what we've talked about all year it's definitely you know it's it's win or go home we understand that and we know we have to we're gonna have to play better and we're gonna have to um do a few things uh different again and and just see you know what can work we've tried every imaginable double team square it up um it would help if we can make some shots uh from the three-point line uh, i like the fact that we got 35 but eight makes is not going to cut it when they you know they made 17. has this series shown you anything what you guys will need for the future or anything like that i mean i know you're still in it but i'm not i'm not interested in talking about the future i'm just focused on our group right now and how we can uh, get this next game. I just got one. Yep. Candace. Got there were a couple of times, especially on the offensive end, when Davis seemed to take on barge to some physicality, getting fouled, thought he was fouled. Um, do you guys, do you think your guys have adjusted to the physicality and how things are being called throughout the series? Well, I mean, it's it's this this is a their two bigs are as physical as any two bigs in the league. If maybe they're they're probably one and two, and you can argue which one's more physical than another. Um, but you have to be able to to manage that. Uh, that they 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 set big screens and hard screens, and they foul hard. They got a lot of experience from that spot. But it's a physical game. We all know in the playoffs it raises up a level. And we could, you know, definitely we can get a little bit better in, in that area, but we see it and we got to be able to do it now. Kareem. 
you, Scott. I wanted to ask your thoughts on Brad real quick. You know, obviously the threes aren't falling like the way you'd like, but at the same time, he's putting in a whole lot of work these three games. Yeah, I mean, he's Brad is Brad's a hooper, man. That guy just loves to play, and he plays hard. He didn't shoot the ball well. He hasn't shot the ball well from three, but he he just gives you everything he has. And you know, right now he's he's you know not happy. None of us are. Um, but he's going to keep leading the group. That's what he does. And couldn't ask for a better leader. Um, he knows, he knows we gotta, we're going to have to play better. He knows we got one more, uh, one more opportunity to do that. Um, but he, he, he'll come back and, and give his, give it his all the next game. That's what he does. He's a winning basketball player. Unfortunately, we haven't won yet in this series but he impacts winning as well as anybody in the league. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, last question to Neil. Scott, you went with the four guard lineup a couple of times there. What were you hoping to accomplish there with it more, you know, hoping the offense would outweigh the defensive? Just try to generate some, um, some driving kicks and some um, get them, get them moving with some, ball movement, you know, they were playing a lot of, they were playing small themselves and um, just trying to create some three, three opportunities and some, um, some defensive opportunities where we can use our quickness, maybe get into their handle a little bit. It's always the balance of trying to get as many offensive players and defensive players, the two way players at, at, at once, but we, we, we played hard. We just didn't, we didn't play well. And that's, you know, when you're in the playoffs, you got to be able to do both. And right now, tonight, we, I wouldn't say we played well, but we, I still, I can look back on everybody. I wouldn't say nobody dogged it. They still tried to compete and playing against a good team that, that play, they're playing at a high level as well. I can't even imagine the, how tough it is to play against Embiid. And you guys tried different things tonight. How is, how is he just tilting the floor in this series so far? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, he, uh, Joe's a man. He's a special talent. You know, we we definitely we got to respect him and tip the cap to him. Our, our whole game plan is basically centered around him, and uh, you know we understand it. I mean, he can score. He's a three level scorer. I mean, he can score from outside on the three. Uh, he's not like most bigs in the league. You know, he can put the ball on the floor, shoot threes. He plays like a guard. Like it's kind of crazy. Um, but you know we. We went a little bit more one-on-one -on -one tonight. Uh, the last two games, we've, we've been doubling them a lot. And uh, we actually had some success with it, but it also forced us into a lot of rotations and uh, open threes. And Ben Simmons under the paint with, you know, smaller guards wasn't good for us. So, uh, you know, we want to go a little bit more one-on-one -on -one tonight. And granted, I mean, he's going to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, and, you know, maybe second half, we tried to make it a little bit more difficult, give him some different looks. But, I mean, he was... He's pretty toasty at that point, so uh, it was tough. It was tough, nonetheless. Um, but he he definitely got the best of us tonight. You uh, you had fans in here for the first time in a while. Like, well, you had you know half capacity tonight. I know the game got away from you, but did you notice notice the fans uh, during the first half, especially? What you trying to say, Da? No, I'm asking. Did you, did you did you hear him? What did you think of them being here? Uh, I mean, we loved it. I loved it. Uh, I mean, we granted we still had a lot of Philly fans in here. I mean, it's only two and a half hours away. Um, but I mean, we were definitely excited about it. They they definitely got got me going a little bit. Um, it's always good to be able to have have our fans and you know in the arena and uh, to be able to have some energy behind us. Uh, but I mean, we definitely. I mean, regardless, fans or no fans, we got to. We got to have a better performance than what we did, uh, but I am appreciative of the fans we did have in here tonight. Fred, hey Brad, um, what did you make of the your guys' three point? They hit a bunch of threes tonight. What what did you make of your guys' actual three point defense and your rotations on the perimeter? That was bad. It was horrible, uh, Fred. We didn't. Uh, uh, Denny Green's a shooter. Seth Curry's a shooter. 
Uh, I think we let Danny hit about four or five threes in the first half, whatever it was. Seth, almost the same thing. Uh, we just didn't make them dribble. Like, <laughs> they, uh, I mean, no disrespect to them, but we, we want them to put the ball on the floor um, and create plays. But, you know, we didn't make them do that. They just literally rose up and shot it over us. Got a lot of open threes. And that was miscommunications and transitions. Uh, you know, us in offense not getting back, getting back on defense, not talking, not matching up, and it just led to open threes, which killed us. I remember early in the year, uh, closeouts specifically were a big emphasis for you guys defensively, and, and you got better at them throughout the year as a team. What, why do you think that's reverted a little bit at points during this series? Uh, I don't know. I really wish I could pinpoint it for you. Uh, you know, everything on the fly in this game, you know, at this level in the playoffs, everything is intensified and everything is, you got to be a quick thinker, uh, you know, out there on the floor. So it's, it's tough, um, but can't pinpoint it. I really wish I could, but uh, we just have to be better. Have to be better. I mean, we can't, can't revert back to old ways. Like in some ways it felt like we were just getting beat up and just couldn't, we just stopped fighting back for a minute. That, that was a little frustrating, but we just got to keep chugging. Chase. Hey, Brad. Uh, w when did you realize that Russ would be good to go tonight? And just uh, what did you think of the way he played and how he looked? Uh, well, I know Russ, you know, if it's not broke, he's going to play. So um, I'll be honest, I kind of knew, hell, after the last game, he's going to play. Uh, just knowing who he is, you know, it, even if it was for two minutes, you know, he was going to go out there and, and give it whatever he had. So. And for him to give us the production he had on uh, <clears throat> one leg, I mean, it was feels pretty good, very good. Matt Paris. Hey, Brad, what do you take away from being in a hole like this? Uh, you know, you guys have faced a lot of adversity so far this year. Just what do you take that you're actually in? I don't think you've ever been in a three hole hole before. So just what do you take away actually being in yeah, it was funny. I was just thinking about that in the locker room. I've never been been down 3-0. Uh, it's, uh, it's tough, obviously. You know, you, you don't want to give in to, to what the record says. And you, you just want to continue to take it a day at a time. I mean, and the positive of it is it's happened before. You know, it's happened in history. So, you know, in a lot of ways that, that uplifts me, um, keeps me positive and had a crappy game tonight. So, Way worse than the first two. And, uh, for me, that, that gives me confidence. I know I won't play the way I did tonight, you know, next game. Um, but we all, I don't think any of us will. I think we'll definitely, we'll be a lot more juiced and ready to go and uh, start fighting back. But yeah, I've never been in this position. So I'm definitely kind of processing it and how to approach it day by day. But obviously the biggest thing is to win and do whatever that takes to do so. Thanks. Hey, Brad, the last time you guys hosted was 2018. I'm just curious for you personally, how have you evolved since that series back then? And, and how is this experience different than, you know, what is that, three seasons ago? Yeah, I mean, for one, it's a totally different team. Uh, that's the first thing I always say is a totally different team. Uh, I think I'm probably the only guy remaining from two years ago, whatever. Uh, so in that, in that instance, like I... I mean, my production is just, and my growth has has been just that. Like I, I just take pride in it and getting better um, each and every game, and obviously in the off season getting better. And you know, granted, I had some some opportunities to be able to do a little bit more for my team, uh, and in those opportunities, I was I had some success, and I just stay with it. You know, coach trusts me, uh, teammates in the organization trust me to just continue to lead and and uh, kind of be the franchise focal point. But uh, obviously, I still have a long way to go. I still got a lot of room to grow. Uh, but I'm definitely not the same player I was two years ago um, in, in that series. I mean, I think I was, I don't think I handled the ball or played on the ball as much as I do now um, or create as much as I do now, too, so. Cool, cool. Thank you. Alex. 
Hey, Brad, I, I know you said this is your first time being down 3-0, um, but you are one of the senior leaders on this team, you know, one of the guys that's been with this franchise longer. What, what's your kind of message to the rest of the group, what, what, or especially the younger players, on, you know, how, how they can still come out and keep fighting and how are you kind of trying to get people to, to come out and game forward and still fighting like that? I'm a huge fan of the word embrace, embracing everything, embracing stages of life, embracing every situation you're in. And it's the same thing with this, you know, embrace where we are, you know. Um, I think a lot of times even, I mean, I was in those, in those shoes before my first time in the playoffs, you're pressing, you're pressing, you want, because you want to do well. Like you want to do well, you want to help the team. Uh, you understand the level and the magnitude of it. You know, everybody's up, all eyes are on you, you know, so you want to do well. And uh, I think a lot of times we lose sight of having fun. And uh, and you know why we why we got to where we are and you know how we sustained that you know we enjoyed each other's play, um, and and have fun in the process. You know we had growing pains along the way, but those are going to happen. Uh, obviously, like you said, I, I haven't been here before, but obviously my message is embrace where we are. You know it's adversity. It's a tough team we're playing, uh, but every day we have a day to win. You know every day we have a we have a, we have a chance to win. So tomorrow starts with our preparation again. Uh, getting better, game planning, and how we can get better. Get in the gym, knock some shots down, feel good about ourselves, and then come back, come back on Monday ready to go. But you know, this is this is the best job in the world, you know, and I always take pride in that, and I enjoy that. Never lose sight in it, and you know, to be on this stage, not every team, not every player has that opportunity. Uh, so, you know, don't take it for granted. Enjoy it, and uh, and give it your all. That's that's all you can do. Thanks, Brad. Neil. Hey, Brad, how would you assess where you are health wise with the hamstring and anything else that might be ailing you? Do you feel like you're still limited in any way? Uh, it's better, a whole lot better. Um, I couldn't put a percentage on it. I know I'm closer to 100 than anything. Uh, so I definitely feel good at certain, I mean, it's every now and then, uh, maybe some long strides or I'm sprint outs or something like that. I may be a little bit hesitant to do, but uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm think I'm plumb, moving around pretty good and I don't have any any problems. I mean, obviously, sometimes I get a little compensation pains from, you know, my other side of my body and my calf and stuff, but um, for the most part, I'm good. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. All right, last question, Christos. Hey, Brad, hope you're doing well. Do, as a team, to play better in the game five and, and game four, I'm sorry, and is the aggressiveness one of the key factors of your game about game four? Uh, I mean, obviously, we have to come out with an aggressive mindset on defense. I mean, our offense, we have a bunch of guys who can score. You know, Russ and I are going to create. And, you know, we well, we have to be a lot better in taking our challenges defensively as a team and individually. Um, you know, they're getting a lot of points in the paint. They're getting a lot of threes. They're getting pretty much what they want. We're not dictating to them what, you know, how we want them to play. You know, we got to be better at that. Um, you know, it's similar to how they do us on offense. You know, once their defense is set, it's very tough for us to to get going. Uh, you know, they're the number one team once they get their defense set in the league. So, you know, we have to we have to keep that in mind in our approach. You know, we got to get on transition. But, you know, the only way to do that is to get stops and rebound the ball, you know, which are two things that we've been struggling with. So. Uh, I think it starts there, you know, just just being more locked in on the defensive end, understanding that, yeah, they got threats, they got weapons, but we can do both. You know, we can take away Joel and we can take away their threes. You know, we can we can do both, but it's just it's going to take some some extra efforts from everybody. And from game four, what was what was going to be the biggest challenge mentally wise for your team? Uh, I guess, I don't know. I've never been in a 3-0 situation, so it's, it's different for me. Uh, but I would say just try not to think about it. You know, try not to think about what situation you're in is 0-0, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, you know, because the main objective is to get one. You know, you get one and build from there. And uh, I think that's all I'm focused on. That's all we're focused on. Uh, but obviously, you know, we, we come in and we, we become confident. You know, we're confident in ourselves. We're confident in what we can do. Um, and you know, don't get discouraged. They're, they're a tough team. They got they got star players, um, but I mean, this is the playoffs, you know. So we we gotta they put their shoes on just like we do. On paper, it, you obviously pulled out a triple double, but how was the ankle feeling? Uh, you know, so so. Just try to give out, go out, and do what I can.
pretty much it. And uh, Scott was saying, obviously, it's it's tough when you've got guys like Ben Simmons and, and Embiid who can kind of just pass to each other over the defense. But what adjustments do you feel like you could make going into a game four? Oh, you just got to be tough. When we're going to go home, there's really too much to talk about. X and O's really don't matter at that point. Um, just got to be able to grind it out uh, and be tough. That's about it. Chase. Russ, obviously, Joel Embiid has had a really good year, but um, what, what was the challenge like tonight where he was just able to make shots from all over? It's tough, man. You know, he's been playing great all year long. You know, he's difficult to be able to, you know, stop. We got to do it collectively. Um, but when he's making shots like that, um, you got to live, live with something. Um, you know, he's, he's going to be a great player in this league for a long time. And, uh, you know, we just got to make it more difficult for him going into game four. Yeah. Russ, you've been in both, you know, situations where you could clinch with the next win and where you could, where the season could end with the next loss. So, like, what do you start with when you say, this is this is what we have to do to, to have a chance to win game four? Uh, well, I, I do know how hard it is to close the team out. Um, I also know it's like, of somebody to come back up, you know, because three one, three zero, whatever it is. Um, so yeah. I've been on both sides. I think uh, for me, just try to make sure that uh, my team know understand it's one game. You can't win four games in one night. Um, and we're home. Uh, we need to take advantage of that. Use our crowd. Use our uh, our youth and our speed, and, and make sure we utilize it and leave everything we have on the floor and see what happens. And then. We won one, one game, then we go to Philly and see what happens. That's all you can do um, is take one game at a time, one possession at a time, and, and go from there. Fred. Hey, Russell. Um, Philly was 17 for 33 from three. Uh, what what did you make of your guys' three-point defense tonight? I don't know. I have to look at it and see. Mark. Russ, uh, everyone's talked about Embiid, and rightly so, but but how about the depth of that starting lineup where there's just so many threats uh, and, and just dealing with such a deep starting lineup that they have? What is that, a statement or a question? Well, how how difficult has that been with the, dealing just with the depth that they have in that starting lineup? They're a good team. They're number one team in the East for a reason. Um, we got to do a good job of but. You know, honestly, for me, I mean, they put our they put their shorts on the same way that we put ours on. They put their jersey on the same way we do. We got to be tough. As simple as that. No matter who in our lineup, who in their lineup, we've been playing well against the best teams all year long, and uh, shouldn't be no different now. Okay, thanks, Matt Paris. Russell, just wanted to get your reaction to the the statements from the NBA that they put out just kind of after um, the incident in Philadelphia and, and kind of the response you've made for, what do you make of the response from the league and everything that's kind of unfolded? I mean, within the league did, it did the most they could do. Um, and that's that simple as that. Thank you. Last question, Neil. Hey, Russ, you've been in some defensive assignments against both Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris. What are you trying to do when you're just matched up against some bigger guys? Um, I mean, just using my, my size, my quickness, my strength. Um, and that's pretty much it. Embiid is obviously just such a tough guy to handle. When he gets going on a roll like that, what can you do when you're defending him? They need your power to stop him. I mean, you know, it's a high caliber player and they're going to go to him a lot, especially, you know, when guys like me are in the game, you know, try to expose, you know, the guys that he know he can go in. So it's just really just on me to just, you know, I had the confidence in everything that I can possibly have to just lock in on defense. You know, it was, it was a couple of times where I fell for pump fakes, I fell for jab steps, certain things like that. I have to be better in certain situations. And it's still a learning process. My first playoff games, it's like my first playoff series and stuff, but at the same time, I have to be, I have to come out ready to, you know, be the best I can be on the defensive end, especially if it's like a guy like Joel, because night in, night out, he's not just going to lay down and just come out and just, you know, let me do what I want. 
or, you know, he's not just going to lay down and not come at me. So just really just my main thing. I have to, I have to lock in mentally. I have to have mental toughness and I have to have, you know, that sense of urgency when it comes to guarding a guy like him to be able to, you know, maintain him and contain him throughout the game and certain things like that. And, and you mentioned the, uh, leaving your feet on pump fakes and stuff. I know that's something you've worked to, to get better at over the years. What is it when, when a guy gets you in the air, do you, do you feel it when it's happening? When, when do you realize, okay, this is, this is how I can fix this? No, I mean, with Joel, he has a real long pump fake. And sometimes you think just like how he's, you know, pump faking stuff. You think he's about to go into a shot. It's a real high pump fake. So um, just me, I have to have, you know, like I said, that sense of urgency and just like knowing the personnel and just like knowing he's going to do that, especially when I'm closing out them. Cause you know, I don't want the three to go. I don't want the three to come off, but at the same time I have to contain him if he pump fakes and dribble, tries to dribble around me. So yeah, you know, just, that's just my main thing with that. You know. Chase. Um, hey Daniel, uh, coach Brooks said that uh, anytime a, a young player like you is in the playoffs and guards a guy like him be, they can learn a lot. They can learn a lot about themselves. Um, has has this experience been eye opening so far? I mean, first playoffs uh, guarding a guy as good as him. It has, because I mean, you know, the guys that have been in the league for a long time, and guys like Joel, you know, MVP caliber players, All Star caliber players, they're gonna come out and they're gonna play. Simple as that. You know, they're gonna come out and do the things that they have to do to win. This is a playoff team, and he's a playoff player. He showed up for his team when he needed to. And just the learning step with me is just being ready to take that challenge and step up to try to make sure I try to, you know, maintain and contain him. You know, it's not going to be easy. Like I said, night in, night out, he's going to come in with the mentality to just go at us, go at us big, you know, from like Alex to Rolo to me. And we just have to come out and just lock in on him because it was, it was, you know, at the first two games we were, you know, trying to keep him from going baseline and simple things like that. Then now we're trying to, you know, contain him one-on-one. And we just have to lock in, you know, especially like when it comes down to it, you know, they're running plays for him, they're getting him on the block and certain things like that. We just have to, I would say, man up and up the physicality. Because like I say, he's not going to back down. Nobody's going to back down. It's the playoffs. Everybody's playing for something. So we can't do it. Like if we're down there, we can't do the same, same thing. We got to, you know, come out and play, lock in mentally and be able to just maintain and make sure, you know, he's, you know, taking the shots that we want him to take instead of shots that he wants to take. And being down 0-3 in the series, uh, what what needs to be the mindset going into game four? Mindset is just really just coming out to play. You know, um, we've, we have we are in this position, you know, because it's just, you know, they came in and they handled their business, I would say. Um, we can come out and we can have the same mentality as we had in the first, you know, in the first game of the series. We just got to come out and play. We just got to up the physicality. We got to play, you know, with that physicality that they're coming out and playing with us. You know, they're throwing punches. You got to throw punches back. That's just the main thing. Can't just lay down for, you know, teams like this because, you know, you lay down, they're just going to step over you. That's something that, you know, we don't want for sure at all. Um, so, you know, we're down 0-3. Should be some motivation to where it can, you know, help us come out, play in game four, and for sure try to be on top and turn this thing around for us. Ava. Daniel, you talked about uh, mental toughness. Brad also said that you guys need to get back to kind of having fun and, and remembering the things that got you here. How, especially as someone going through his first playoff experience, how do you kind of find the balance between urgency and not putting too much pressure and thinking too much in the game? Really just coming out and playing basketball, you know? Like, I, it's, it's a lot of guys on this team that has been in this position for the first time, for sure, me, myself included. Um, just really just coming out and not letting anything, not letting the playoffs, not letting all the talking and stuff around us really just gets us, you know. Um, they got to come out and play basketball. It's got to come out and stay locked in, you know. It's it's gonna it's a new experience for everybody. And it's, I know, you know, it's a lot of people that can take it differently than others. But um, once we get over the butterflies, once we get over the jitters, and once we get over the, all that crazy energy and stuff that comes with it, comes to the playoffs and stuff, we're going to be, we're going to be fine. Daniel. Daniel, uh, Russ and Brad are both guys that, you know, pride themselves on helping everybody one through 15 on the roster, uh, you know, throughout whatever. What has been some of their feedback or some of their advice that maybe 
they've given you in these past three games to help you grow? Keep fighting. Rush told me tonight to stop fucking Fowler. <laughs> but um, really just other than that, you know, just keep fighting. Just stay locked in mentally and, you know, stay together as a team because, you know, at the end of the day, we all we got, you know, from the first five to start on the floor to the guys that's coming off the bench. You know, it's we're gonna have a lot of energy throughout, you know, the arenas and certain things like that, whether we're home or we're away. We all we're all we have. We like we're all we have. We always have to have each other's back. And just really just with what Russ and Brad says, we gotta keep fighting. We gotta come out with a sense of urgency to where we wanna win basketball games. And that's just that that just pretty much sums it up right there. We gotta come out and play winning basketball. Christos. Daniel, along those, li those lines, what do you need to do to play winning basketball in game four? Say again? What do you need to do to play winning basketball in game four? Oh, yeah, just like I've always said, up the physicality, come out with a lot more energy. Well, I mean, we had came out with a lot of energy tonight. You know, we started off good. We hit shots, certain things like that. One thing we got to do is just make sure we don't get down of our – get. Ah, I can't even talk. Get down on ourselves mentally. You know, it's a lot of frustration that happens throughout um, NBA games for sure. You might get mad at the refs because of the calls that they're missing or they're making, certain things like that. We just got to stay locked in as a team, you know, through and through. Like I said, from the guys that start off and from the guys that's on the bench. Just stay locked in as a team and stay together. Because if we stray off to our, like, mental mental lapses to where we're down on ourselves or we're frustrated or anything like that, that's when the tides turn for the other team. And if we can just control that and control our emotions and certain things like that, we'll be fine. So that's what I feel like we should do. We should have, like, be able to do coming into game four, be able to get us a win for sure. Chase, sorry. Um, you are uh, an athletic and energetic center, and you played a lot to minute against Dwight Howard, who's also a veteran with a similar style of game as yours. So, uh, what did you learn playing against him in a playoff series? Can you say it again? Like, you were muffled at first. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was saying you are very athletic and energetic, and you played a lot of minutes against Dwight Howard is a center is similar to your style of game but it's also a veteran mm -hmm. and so what did you if what did you learn uh, playing against him in a playoff series this was the type of player that he is he's you know real physical and he comes out to play every night you know he doesn't back down from anything and just being in a position that he's in he comes out and he knows his role so i kind of you know just being kind of like the same type of player that he is, you know, live threat, block shots, being a high energy guy, certain things like that. Just coming out and just playing in my role, you know, not doing anything that, you know, I'm not used to or that I haven't been doing throughout the season that's getting me, you know, I would say the points that I'm getting or the rebounds that I'm getting or the blocks that I'm getting, you know, just letting everything come to me because he does the same thing. He goes for rebounds, he has high energy and he plays physical. So those are some of the things that I really just learned from Dwight because, you know, he just comes out and he plays his role. He knows his role. He comes out and does his job. That's what I. That's what I try to do, night in, night out, for sure. Uh, 